So once you know how to set up, so how to configure your data set in the basic SSRS development environment, how do you create reports? Well, here's an example of something that you might do with the basic data set that, uh, that I'm working with, the opportunities. I've got uh, the design surface here, and when I'm working in the Business Intelligence Development Studio environment for uh, creating these SSRS reports, I can go back and forth between the design view and preview in the report. So this is going up against the data set that we saw, and this is kind of a cool report. I mean, it certainly shows you something that you can do with SSRS that uh, is not nearly uh, close to being supported with the uh, the built-in report wizard. So for example, I've got uh, my open opportunities group by sales stage, and I've got the ability to expand and contract. So expand and collapse these stages, and if I expand them, I can see detail for all the opportunities in that stage. And then each stage, I've got the currency total of the uh, open opportunities for that stage, but I've also got a data bar that represents the height, the uh, value of the total for that stage. So this is a pretty good example of something that you would uh, really not be able to do unless you use this approach. So let's see how you'd go about creating like a report like that. So I'll go ahead and delete that element, and we will start from scratch. I guess the first thing to note is, you know, I've already got the um, this this is uh, the pipeline two report that we're working with here. So I'm I created a new RDL file, and it's already got the data source set up. So if I view the report data, so I can toggle back and forth between the two tabs here. So it's the same basic data set that we set up previously. So let's go ahead and build this thing. First thing I want to do when I'm designing report is view the toolbox. The toolbox is what in Visual Studio contains all of the different tools and components that I'm going to use to create this thing. What I'm going to do here is work with the basic table tool or control. I'll drag that out and drop it on the design surface. And the first thing I'll do is uh, it's got this table and row format, not too surprisingly. I want to insert a bunch of columns so I have enough columns to work with. And I'm just going to keep inserting columns to the right. And that's probably pretty good for what I want to do. I'll get rid of the toolbox for now. And then all I'm going to do is put some fields from the data set down in this, on the data line or the detail line of this report. So let's go ahead and grab a few. And when we're working in SSRS, I mentioned that the field names uh, look a little bit cluttered the first time you see it. Remember, for numeric and date fields, you're going to see two separate fields represented in SSRS for the for one field that you have in CRM. Here's my estimated revenue, the schema name's estimated value. Uh, for numeric and date fields, you want to use the second one, the one that actually has the extra value on the end of it. It looks funny here because the estimated revenue field already is, you know, it's got the value in the schema name, so it's like estimated value value, but that's, that's the one you want. That's the actual value. This is a formatted text representation in that field. So we want this one here. So here's the estimated um, value. But what I want to do here is I want to put down the estimated close date. And so for dates and numerics, you want the thing with the value at the end. So the first I'll put there is estimated close date value. Here, let's just put customer here. Oops. I'm going to click that little field icon there. And for customer, I want customer ID. Then let's put the topic, which is actually, conveniently, this is the name, that's the schema name of the opportunity. So I've got the estimated close date, the customer ID, the name of the thing, and let's get finally the estimated value. Remember, estimated value, value, like that right there. Now, if I preview this, You can see that the, the data appear to be fine, but it's not formatted very nicely. So let's start fixing that. I'm going to right click any of these fields that needs formatting and choose text box properties. 
select the number property. This is a currency, and I'm going to use this comma to separate the thousands places like that. And then I'll do a similar thing for the estimated close date. Right click it, text box properties, always the same thing. Choose the number format here. And in this one, I'll choose a date, and I like this one right here. Let's see what that does. It's going to strip all the trailing time stuff off the end of that. So this is looking a little bit better. You can do a little bit better than that. Let's sort by estimated close date. So what I can do is right click anywhere on this component here, on the sort of the outer edge of this. And if I do that, see this thing is referred to as a tablix. It's an interesting naming uh, scheme for this. Um, what that sort of indicates is I could drop multiple reports down here on this, or multiple tables, tablets that is, on the same design surface. So that is kind of cool. I could do that. But what I'm going to do here is use tablets properties to add a level of sorting. So if I want to sort this thing separately from how the underlying data set is sorted, remember, I can do it right here. So I'll click Add. And what I want to sort on is the estimated close date value. I'll do an A to Z sort, which is the one we'd want here. So now you can see it's uh, ascending on date. I can widen these columns out a little bit. And how about if I give them better names? So estimated close date. Estimated close. Tab over. Call this customer. Name. And this is estimated revenue. So we're making progress here. Looks a little bit better. But we can do much better than that. So the next thing that I want to do is let's add a level of grouping. Now these are Opportunities that are let's, uh, check the tablets properties and let's look at the filters and let's make sure that we've only got open opportunities in here. So let's add a filter. And the filter expression in this case, we want to filter on the state code. But we actually want Let's see, do we want state code or state code value? Let's try this. State code value equals zero. It's one or the other. I always forget. We want open opportunities. Yeah, it looks like that was the, the right call. Okay. So what we did there was we added a filter so that we only have, will have open opportunities. If I chose one, just to test the theory, that should filter on on one opportunities and we don't have any in the data set. So that, that tells me that that's, uh, we're on the right track. So let's set that back to zero, which is for open opportunities. Okay, so now let's add a group by sales stage. So I'm going to right click on the detail line and I'm going to add a group. It'll be a parent group, and what I want to group by is sales stage. Down here somewhere. This is going to be the sales stage code. And we'll add a group header and a group footer. And we can preview that. So now we've got our qualifies together. There's a needs analysis, prepare solution, close. Making progress here. So we can get rid of this first column. Don't need that column. How do we add a total? Remember we added a group header, that's this. We added a group footer, that's this. If I go to the group footer and select a numeric field, as in estimated value value, 
SSRS will automatically total it. Let's give it a good format. Notice it puts the sum around that. So there I've got the sum. Making progress here. Now, what do we do next? How about let's add the expanding and collapsing uh, groups trick. So I right click on the detail line and notice there's a row visibility property. Open that up and we're, we tell it to hide that row but we allow users to toggle it by the sales stage code. I can preview it. Look better all the time. Expand one or more than one if I want to. So now what we need to do is clean this up a little bit. One of the things we might want to do is also hide, say, the group header and then put the column headers for the data that only appears on the detail lines inside the group. So you only see it when it's relevant. Just like that. Put those all down there. Now I right click on that row, use the same row visibility trick, hide it by default, but let users toggle it on sales stage code. And now I don't need to see those headers unless they're relevant, unless I've got some data showing. So that's another tr kind of a technique that you'll, you'll use a lot. You can merge cells, just like in Word and Excel, so that if we don't need to see the, uh, the data grids there, they don't show up. I'll delete that column. We're making good progress here. Oh, we can probably change sales stage code to a better thing. How about just sales stage? Okay, now, how about that uh, data bar? How are we going to get that for the, the total, uh, the group total for estimated revenue for sales stage. This is kind of a cool trick too. You can right click on a header or footer row and if I tell it to insert a row but I want to insert a row say inside the group below effectively what it does it just adds another group footer line and if I select the field selector again on that column there and I'll select that estimated value value. I'll show you what this is going to do. We'll merge cells with those. Now if I preview this, notice I didn't format that. So 634,000 there, 634,000 there. It's the same same thing, but I don't need to format that because that's what's going to do the data bar for us. So if I view the toolbox and drop the data bar right on that numeric value, I'll just select the default value there, the default option for the data bar. What that gives me is my nice, so that's a dynamic graphical representation. That's how it picks that up. So it's going to, whichever is the biggest number in a group, it'll effectively fill up the entire column for that, and the others will scale proportionately. So that's a pretty good example of, of how you could use something like that. And I think this is probably about, you know, besides doing things like, you know, maybe we want to bold all of the headers. We can just do that. And now with, uh, with five minutes worth of work, we've got a collapse and expanding sort of a view of our sales stage or pipeline by sales stage. And we see more details when we expand sales stages. We've got that graphical representation of the, uh, of the totals by stage. And you can imagine lots of different permutations of this. You could have it, uh, you know, sales stage within sales stage by opportunity owner and have multiple levels of groups and things like that. You can also have, um, there are other report types in 
SSRS. If you view the, uh, the toolbox, uh, there are others like, for example, uh, we looked at the uh, table report, but there's a matrix report that gives you not only multiple rows, but also dynamic columns across the top. So there's lots of things you can do with this. So anyway, so what we did was in five minutes, or maybe slightly more than five minutes, um, showed uh, a, a pretty nice report with, without much polish, but certainly something that uh, would be difficult to do in any other way besides SQL Server reporting services. So uh, with, uh, you know, if you spend a couple hours on something, just think what you could do with that, right? So anyway, that is uh, the basics of uh, SSRS uh, report design.